afternoon. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Ocean Conservation Trust live lesson. My name's Esther and I'm here at the National Marine Aquarium in Plymouth for your very first live lesson here on deep science. So welcome, welcome to deep science. I know a lot of you are probably learning from home right now and you might have been following the BBC series The Deep and that's where Ant and his family explore the ocean. What we'll be doing in these sessions every week is going to be looking into the science and exploring the science behind those phenomena that Ant and his family discover. So let's get started. Last week, Ant came across an underwater volcano. So our subject today is all about volcanoes and we're going to be learning all about why do volcanoes erupt? And what a great place to start because volcanoes, like the ocean, are absolutely essential for life on Earth. From the ground that we're walking on to the atmosphere that we're breathing, underwater volcanoes is where life on Earth began. So it's a great place for us to start. And did you know that there are over 1,500 active volcanoes on, on the planet? That's a lot of eruptions, about 85 every year. The most active volcano on Earth is in a very tropical place, kind of like our coral seas have here. Although the volcano is not in here because that would scare the animals quite a lot. But if you've got a map or a globe at home, see if you can find it. And I want you to see if you can identify this area. This area is called the Pacific Ocean Basin. It's a huge bit of sea and the largest part of the ocean. And it's a very volcanically active area. The reason for that is this is the Ring of Fire. 40,000 kilometres of active volcanoes all around this area. And when you find that on your map or your globe, see if you can identify that oceanic basin, the Pacific Ocean, right in the middle here is Hawaii. Now, Hawaii is this very small chain of islands, absolutely beautiful tropical islands. And the reason they're so vibrant and full of life is to do with the volcanic activity. Because this is the location of Mount Kilauea. Kilauea is the most active volcano on the planet today. And it started off right down on the ocean floor as an underwater volcano. And every year it erupted and erupted and erupted, building up more and more and more rocks until it now stands from the sea floor to its summit, 9,000 kilometers tall of Mount Loa and Mount Kilauea. That's taller than Mount Everest. Isn't that huge? Imagine how big that is. See how high you can stretch up. Can you stretch up as tall as you can? Be the tallest volcano you can be. Or, better yet, you could build a model of one. And what we're going to be getting you to do today is to make some models of volcanoes. We'd like you to draw one. We'd like you to paint one. We'd like you to make a volcano of your very own. You can even make one out of paper mache. I made this one with my nephews, Judah and Joa, and it's really amazing. We even decorated it with some dinosaurs. So if you've got some cool toys that you want to put on your volcano model, please do so. Isn't it beautiful? But you don't need to have paper mache or modelling clay. You can even make one if all you've got is some paper at home. Because all you need is a square piece of paper like this. And what you're going to do is carefully get some help, if you're not sure, cut a circle out of the middle of your paper. And then with some paint or some pens, you can decorate it, make it look all lava. You can do a better job than I've done here. But all you need to do is to shape it into a cone. So you might need to get some help if you've got a stapler or some tape. And you're going to shape it into a cone like this. You can make it stay like this. The most important thing, though, when you're making a model of a volcano is to make sure that you leave a hole in the top. Because the best thing about making a model is making it erupt. So that's what we're going to do today with a very simple science experiment. So all you'll need is a bottle or a jar, you can use an old coffee jar or even an old shampoo bottle if you want. And you're going to make sure that that fits underneath your volcano model like this. And the science experiment we're going to do is very simple. All you need is a few ingredients from around the home. You'll need an acid, we're using acetic acid, which is just normal vinegar that you'd put on your chips. So we're going to put a little bit of vinegar inside our bottle. Like this. 
You can use any acid you can find around the house. We'd encourage you to use different types of acid. And you don't need too much, so don't overfill your bottle. You only need about that much in there. And then you're going to place your volcano model around the outside like this. The second ingredient you need for the experiment is an alkali. We're going to use bicarbonate of soda, but you can even use baking powder. And you can get all of these on any supermarket baking aisle, or you can have a look in your kitchen at home. But make sure you ask permission before you start rummaging in all the cupboards. So all you need is a few tablespoons of teaspoons. <laughs> Don't use tablespoons. <laughs> use a few teaspoons of bicarbonate of soda and a little bit of water. And you're going to dissolve the powder in the water. So give it a good stir, like this. And if you really want it to be quite foamy, and you've got permission at home, get a little bit of washing up liquid. This makes it really cool. So you stir in a little bit of washing up liquid. And I'm also going to add one last thing, but you don't have to do this bit. I'm going to add a little bit of food colouring to my bottle, because I think it just makes it look more like lava when it's pouring out the sides. So pour a little bit of food colouring in. Make sure you get permission to do this, because food colouring does stain, as you can see. It's all over my fingers there. So make sure you get permission to use food colouring before you do. And all we're going to do is combine these reactants. And when they combine inside that bottle that we put under the model, the acid and the alkali have a neutralisation reaction and they react together to produce a salt and lots of carbon dioxide. Now, when you've got lots and lots of gas, the pressure builds up and builds up, and, well, you'll see what happens. Should we do it? Are you ready? Woo! Oh, that, that was bigger than I was expecting. Wow! Okay, so you saw that neutralisation reaction there, and you got a really great eruption. You can see the lava is pouring out, but it's not a real volcano. That's just a model. Um, and I'd like you to have a go doing that at home. In fact, get really scientific and see if you can try out some different acids. Maybe use some lemon juice, some Coca-Cola. See how it affects the reaction. And we'd love to see what type of eruptions you can create. Now, while that science experiment's really cool, it doesn't really explain to us why do volcanoes erupt. But to explain that, I'm going to use this apple here. Because the reason that volcanoes erupt is because the Earth has four layers. So we're going to have a look inside here. Inside the apple, this middle section with the pips represents the inner and outer core of the earth. That's made of solid iron. And then this fleshy white bit here, the bit that we eat, that represents the mantle. The mantle is liquid rock flowing and oozing ever so slowly all over the place. And then on the outside, the peel, that represents the crust. The crust is the part of the land that we're walking on, the ground beneath our feet, and even the sea floor under the oceans. But you might notice that the peel here is all in one piece. That's not the same on the crust of the earth. The ground that we're walking on is all split into segments, like a jigsaw puzzle, and split into pieces. And these pieces of the crust, the earth's crust, are called tectonic plates. Now, I want to model what happens in a volcano, what makes a volcano erupt using your body. So I want you to stand up wherever you are. You're probably at home sitting on the sofa learning from TV. So I want you to stand up. I want you to get your hands and place them together. Okay, because when those tectonic plates of the crust push together, they're floating on the mantle, they collide and they rub together. And I want you to start rubbing your hands together because they create friction. So I want you to rub your hands together, rub them as far as you can, push really, really hard, faster. I want you to rub them much, much faster than that. That's not fast enough. Go faster. And really quickly, you're going to place them on your face. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Oh, what can you feel? Does your hand feel hot? That's because friction generates heat. And when that happens with the tectonic plates colliding, the friction actually creates rocks to melt. So real rock in the crust would turn to liquid. And that creates a magma chamber of liquid rock. And that rock contains lots of tiny little bubbles. So I want it to be a tiny bubble. See how small you can get? Smaller, 
much, much smaller. Can you get right down the ground? Some of you aren't doing it. Come on, right down the ground, small as you can go. You're a tiny little gas bubble. Imagine you're a tiny, tiny, tiny gas bubble, as small as you can go. That's really good. You're a tiny gas bubble now. Imagine what happens when gas bubbles get shaken. So how many of you like Coca-Cola or fizzy drinks? Yeah, whenever you've got a fizzy drink, you're not really meant to shake it up and down, are you? Because when you shake a fizzy bottle, a bottle full of gas, it builds up the pressure. So when you're this gas bubble inside all that melted magma, all that molten rock, and you get shaken, what might shake you, do you think? When does the earth shake? In an earthquake. So when there's an earthquake and the bubbles get shaken around, shaken around, go and wobble around, you're a tiny little gas bubble. I want you to shake as much as you can. The pressure's going to build up and build up and build up. And what's going to happen? Let's see your biggest explosion. Come on. You've all been practicing Joe Wicks. I bet you can jump really high. Are you ready? All that pressure's built up in the magma chamber until suddenly, boom! You're going to explode out of the crust. And that is why volcanoes erupt. How amazing is that? All that pressure building up, erupting out of the volcano. And not only does that happen on land, it happens underwater as well. And we can model that using a very simple experiment. So what we're going to do is put some hot water into our ocean model here. It is quite hot. So if you do this at home, make sure you use some help from an adult. <laughs> okay. So all we're going to do is lower this down and see what happens to the hot magma. It's quite slow, but can you see? It's shooting up through the ocean column, through the water column. And that's modelling what happens in underwater volcanoes. These deep water vents get superheated up to about 400 degrees C. That's hot enough to melt some metals, as you might have seen in the episode of The Deep. The bad guy's submarine got melted by the underwater volcano. And these superheated deep water vents can shoot hot water that's nutrient-rich, almost 2,000 kilometres into, metres into the air. And these nutrient-rich deep water vents are really great for animals that crowd around and bacteria and different parts. They grow in these superheated deep water vents. And scientists believe that it's underwater in our oceans where all life on Earth began, in these superheated deep water vents. That's really amazing, isn't it? I would love to see an underwater volcano. I would like to see the rocks being formed to create the Earth that we walk on. So what we'd like you to do is to have a go. Have a go finding out about volcanoes, look into how they make the land that we walk on, how they've helped create the atmosphere that we breathe with all that carbon dioxide that they're pluming out of themselves when they're erupting. We'd like you to have a go making some crafts, so you can make a model of a volcano, you can make a picture or a painting, we'd love to see a photo of them, and we'd like you to do some science. We'd like you to have a real go at an experiment at home using different acids and alkalis, create that neutralisation reaction and make it erupt out. Search around the house, see what acids and alkalis you have, but make sure you get permission. We had a go doing that here at the aquarium and we found a few things that we were going to use for our big eruption because we wanted to see how big we could get it. And that's what I'd like you to do. Have a go at home and see if you can make an eruption as big as you possibly can. So, the science guys here have had a little look around, seen what ingredients they can try. We've had a few tries, but I'm sure you can have a go as well. And we're going to have a go with this one here. And we'll see if we can do it. Are you guys ready in there? I bet these fish have never seen anything like this before. So, are you watching carefully? Now, think about what this is modelling in a volcanic eruption. All that pressure in the magma chamber from the, the molten rock building up pressure as the earthquake shakes those gas bubbles and then suddenly when there's enough pressure built up... Woo! Hey! <laughs> oh wicked! That looks really cool! It fountains out into this huge eruption. I want you guys to try and beat 
that eruption. See if you can get one even bigger than that. Look at all that foam. I think there's going to be some messy households when you guys have a go doing this. So see what you can find out and see if you can create your own models at home. I can't wait to see your creations and some people are probably going to build something really artistic so I can't wait to see what you're going to do. I can see there's loads of questions coming in on the laptop there so I'm going to have a little look some of the questions that you guys have asked and, uh, and answer because there's so many of you putting in questions here. So one person says, how many underwater volcanoes are there? Well, there's different data. Some say that there's 30,000 seamounts of both active and extinct volcanoes. Because volcanoes aren't just active, that means they're still erupting. Some are dormant, that means they're a little bit sleepy. That means they haven't erupted for 10,000 years. And some are completely extinct, like this dinosaur. They don't, they don't expect them to erupt ever again. So they can be dormant, extinct or active, and they think that there are 30,000 underwater. So isn't that amazing? You might be wondering why you don't see volcanoes every day. That's because of those 1,500 active volcanoes, 80% of them are underwater. So you don't just walk along in the park and go, oh, there's another volcano, because 80%, eight out of every 10 eruption is happening underwater. That's pretty amazing, really. Another question coming in is saying, what creatures live near underwater volcanoes? Well, that's a really great question because there are some animals that you can find right here in the aquarium. You know, I told you about that nutrient-rich underwater vent. Well, all around those seawater vents, those, those superheated vents, sea worms and tube worms love to live. So they think that tube worms and little shrimp were some of the first small life forms that developed from the bacteria started growing. So if you ever come and visit us here at the aquarium, up in our Plymouth Sound area, you can see lots of little tube worms and some shrimp, and those can, can live deep, deep, deep down in the ocean under great, great pressure, and, as we know, in hugely high temperature areas. So that's the sort of animals that love to live in underwater volcanoes. That's a really great question. We've got a few more coming in. How many tectonic plates are there? Oh, that's a great one. That, that's using that key word that we found out from the apple. Do you remember modelling the crust? So the tectonic plates of the Earth, there's actually seven major plates that move around on that floating mantle, push together, sometimes pull apart. Isn't it weird to think that the land we're walking on is actually floating on a mantle? That's a really cool question, especially that you remembered that key word, tectonic plates. Um, someone's asked, what is the co oldest volcano in the world? Um, that's a bit of a contentious one. I think the oldest one is Mount Etna in Sicily, in Italy. Um, they, they think that one's about 350,000 years old. But as you know, so many of them are underwater. There might be some that are even older. We've never even seen them before. Because as you know, the ocean holds some of the biggest mysteries on the planet. It's so unexplored, which is why I absolutely love the ocean. So many unknown things going on. OK, I'm just going to have another little look at the questions here. Someone's asked, how hot is an underwater volcano? Oh, we said that one, that was 400 degrees, but good question. That's near the lava plume. You might be thinking about the episode of the deep where Ant was near it and it was 1,200 right down in the magma, in that hot molten magma. But the water itself gets superheated to 400 degrees. But it's amazing that the animals can survive that. Some amazing questions coming in. I'm not gonna have time to answer all of them. So what I'd really like you to do is to keep sending them in Tell us your name, tell us where you're from, and you can send them to learning at oceanconservationtrust.org. And what we'll do is we'll showcase some of those amazing ones that we get sent in. We would love to see your creations, so don't forget a bit of craft, a bit of modelling, some science experiments, and see if you can beat our biggest eruption. We can't wait to see what you've got to share with us. Thank you so much for joining me today here at the National Marine Aquarium. Tune in next week to find out more about the mysteries of the ocean and tune in in 10 minutes time to meet Marina and Mermaid. Thank you so much for watching.